Gen Z! Gen Z, a generation that's never known a world without internet. Without the internet? I really don't know how they survive. I was born in an internet generation. They are digital natives. The first ever smartphone I got was 11 years old. Having it from the age of 10, I'm just so used to it. You may just surprise you. So I'm kind of skeptical when buying things online. I prefer going to the mall. Gen Zs, in a way, it mirrors the older generation, but probably for slightly different reasons. Be it at work. My Gen Z friends, everyone's really focused and determined. I think they are one of the hardest working generations out there. Or at play. I don't drink a lot. I don't think I'll ever get drunk. <laughs> generation Z is shaking up the status quo. Because they are not drinking alcohol, we are creating uh, several flavors of smoothies. Gen Z will overtake the millennials in terms of the biggest purchasers in the next few years. Our Gen Zs are back. Hi again. Hi Jolene. Jolene's from Singapore, working full time at a digital marketing agency. Welcome back. Thanks, Shania. Shania is a university student in Mumbai who will be graduating soon. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too, Jericho. Hope the flying's Hi. good. Jericho from Manila just got a job as a flight attendant. Time for our Gen Zs to show us how they. And spend our money. And yup, they've got the money. Generation Z has a buying power pegged at billions of dollars. So where does our internet generation like to spend their cash? Shopping online, surely. Nope, not quite. I prefer going to the mall. Why? Because I think I could see it visually. In the Philippines, uh, for the online selling, there could be a chance that it could be fake, a replica. So I think it's better to go in the mall. So I like about malls is that I can actually touch and feel the product. Another part of it is it's not of a very hot place. You can chill and relax. Can I try the miso sexy? Miso sexy. <laughs> I totally don't believe that malls are dead because there's so much it has to offer. So the whole mall culture is fun and exciting to me. That's the photo. Yeah, when I go with my friends or like my sister, we go as like proper shopping dates. It's uh, actually quite funny, right? That's Pauline. She's released a 300-page report on Gen Z. It's uh, actually quite funny, right? The older generations like us would shop in malls and we would think Gen Zs would actually just do all online purchases, but no. So in a way, it mirrors the older generation, but probably for slightly different reasons. Uh, the Gen Zs, again, you know, want to be with their friends, whereas the older generations, the Gen Xers and the baby boomers, because that's really how they shop. The material is quite, quite nice. You try? Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Me and my boyfriend do hang out in malls a lot. We can spend quality time together. Also, cafes, F&B outlets. We do shop in malls a lot every weekend. Thank you. Our first date was in a mall, but yeah, actually before we texted and meet each other, he was suggesting a really good prata place at a garden. But apparently I'm like, let's come to a mall, it's safer, right? Yeah, and then we have many other dates in the mall. We have our second date, third date. Then everything we, every time we just go to the mall and go for like entertainment play arcade. It's as though like the mall is our usual place, right? Yeah, got air comes on wall. <laughs> that one set. <laughs> When coming to a mall, one thing I definitely look at is, you know, the proximity and the time. Say like this one, Phoenix Market City, it's just 20 minutes from home. I think 20, 30 minutes max, not more than that. Me and my friends, my sister, we go to malls together to shop because it's, it's just a fun experience. Maybe click some photos together. You go pick out some clothes, try on together. 
because you're discussing and like feeling just so happy about what you picked up. Gen Z lives their life online. That's Sneha. She spent a year studying Gen Z. Gen Z lives their life online. And when you live your life online, you tend to be a lot in your head. And as a result of that, we're also seeing Gen Z really crave physical experiences, experiences that allow them to get out of their heads, out of their technology and into the real world. Shopping is just one example, but it's a larger movement towards physical experiences that allow them to, to feel the world in, in a more real way. This is for the better gift. Come on, move on. I can spend hours over here. I get to go on with my friends too. It's not just about shopping. It's like an overall experience. We can play games. Bumper cars is me and my friends' favorite. We've always played that game growing up, so it has lots of memories and it's altogether extremely fun. Yeah, playing around with this makes me feel like a 11-year-old. It's perhaps ironic that our digital natives can't get enough of malls. So what's their deal then with online shopping? So I'm kind of skeptical uh, when buying or purchasing things online because I'm not sure whether will I get the authentic or the original item. Especially in the Philippines, there are a lot of bogus sellers. I got traumatized because the first ever purchase I got from an online shop, I ordered for a hoodie, yellow, and medium. Then what I got is an like extra small, different color, different texture. They told it's a cotton, but it's not cotton. So uh, for online, I won't, I will never buy clothes anymore. But I think I will buy um, like gadgets, like chargers, uh, things that are not so important. Gen Z's love affair with physical stores is certainly good news for malls. But like any courtship, making sure it lasts takes work. We used to be a digital mall. We have decided to redevelop, looking at what actually appeals to the next generation of shoppers. Just purely shopping will not attract the younger generation. So we have to have different experiences in the store. One of the concepts that we brought in, you know, baking studio, that engages the younger generation. We have a store, they sell dancewear, but they also have a studio behind. Not only could they buy clothes which involves dancing, but they also can book the studios for their dance classes. Some of our retail concept stores have Instagram spots. They have an AR of a runway with flowers, and that's a hit among the younger generations. So I'm actually taking a photo. You can see flowers popping up. It's really fun shopping like this because it's something very interactive. This photo is obviously going to go to Instagram and snap! Gen Z spend a lot of money. They will overtake the millennials in terms of the biggest purchasers in the next few years. And therefore, they will be an important um, generation to understand and pay attention to. US alone goes up to $143 billion. Um, and that's not including, you know, all of the indirect purchases that's channeled through their parents, no? If you include that, that's $600 billion. So as a whole, Generation Z alone has plenty of money to spend. And when they also influence their parents' spending... Basically, for a big ticket item, we want her to be involved. Yeah, even going on holidays, uh, we will decide on where we want to go. We will listen to her opinion too. The car purchase that they had recently, they actually asked me to test the seat at the back, the passenger seat at the back. Is it too bumpy? Is it comfortable? Or is the overall feel of the car not good enough? Another example, it will be this house I'm actually staying in right now. My mom is a single mother, so we budget everything to not spend too much money. I remember she wanted to buy this jewelry and we need something at home, a microwave. And we told her that, that jewelry could wait. And at the end of the day, she bought the microwave at home. Uh, pag hindi priority talaga, pinag-uusapan muna namin kung ano talaga yung dapat namin bilihin. Pag hindi naman, talagang sinasabi niya na, Mommy, wag muna natin bilhin yun. Can I have a Zislo? Zip No, not the print on print. Not the print on no print. Try the blue one. 
I think I'm fairly involved in my mum's spending and buying my purchases. Mind. I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> Wait. I'm not going to do All this is bought by me. And the secret is this has been influenced by my daughter, Shania. Stop exaggerating, mom. There is no me, Shania. You always say me, mom. What are you wearing? Yeah, that's true. Yes. All of this is my darling daughter, Jen Zender, teaching mama. Pretty much of the times they are right. I am proud of my daughters, the fact that they do influence my decisions in spending. For the simple reason, as the Gen Z uh, kids of today, they are far, far more informed, far, far more aware of everything through social media. And half the time, I would say they are telling us what's in and what's not. When I know I can handle whatever they are giving me information about and I can go ahead with the buying, I go ahead with it. When I can't, I just say no. The Gen Zs are raised by Gen Xers, like me. Um, and Gen Xers parent their children um, in a very open way, meaning that they do listen to their kids' opinions. Millennials couldn't really influence their parents as much. The parents of millennials were the baby boomers. Uh, baby boomers also grew up in a time when um, you know there was a lot of scarcity in the 70s, maybe the early 80s. And across Asia, this was the time the economies were just beginning to grow. They've not seen the age of globalization. They have tended to be a little bit more um, fixed in their worldview as compared to the Gen Xers that came later. Still to come, rewriting the rule book, the tricky side of Gen Z spending power. For me, I really love shopping local. You can't just aimlessly search. Money is really important. Gen Z has got money to spend, but getting them to buy won't be easy. For one, they strike a hard bargain. Come on and catch me now. 90 percent of the time, I would wait for the sale. So the most important part for me when picking product are the sales or the discounted price. Uh, not being cheap, but I prefer buying uh, quality clothes in a cheaper price. <laughs> Okay, so whenever I will look for a specific shirt, I'll make sure uh, to see that shirt, that size, then I ask the sales lady, you could ask the sales lady by the way, if when this will be on sale. Then they will just tell you like next month, then you can have that shirt you love for a cheaper price. Uh, that's why I really do wait for sales and discounted price. If you buy three, we'll have a last 20% off so, any regular price. I also prefer those kind of deals like buy two, get one, or buy three, get one, like that. It's like you're having a free shirt, like you only bought two, then you can get the other one for free. And I think that's a great purchase to have. So I actually go to Facebook to this thing called uh, Money Digest, where you can scroll through all the different kinds of discount codes. Well, other than that, I also use things like um, Telegram a messenger app where you can chat with other people but at the same time have channels to have your to go to your own interest groups like a food discount. I would rather save the money and wait for whatever item that I need. My friends are also the same. We usually wait for a discount. So actually I am a little into watches. So for luxury brand watches, you can actually ask the salesperson for a certain discount. They'll make a call, give, come back to you and say, okay, I can give you this watch at this price. Because they are a lot more on a commission base. Probably 60% of the time, I'll wait for a discount. For the 40% that I will not wait for the discount, are actually limited edition things or classic things or items, products that I know it will never have discount no matter how long I wait. When it comes to a great discount, the comforts of a mall be damned. Nothing like a street market for our bargain hunters. So most shops like this at street fashion always say fixed rate. Even though you see fixed rate, like people and me, I just still go and like try my luck and try and bargain. Even when it strictly says no. 120 me 150 150 okay. 
फर्स्ट कस्टमर गुड लक करना है ठीक है वन फिफ्टी में दे दो In India, they believe that the first customer brings good luck, and that's why you should be here in the morning to get better deals. Uh, something like changing your screen like this done at the stores would easily be three to four hundred bucks, but getting it done here would be a hundred and fifty. And I've had both, and this is as tough and strong as the store one, so this is a better deal again. And not only just changing my phone screen stick on, but even clothes and accessories and like I'm open to shopping over here. Okay, yeah. yeah, thank you. So yeah, that's my phone. I got the screen change. Even my peers are very aware of the whole uh, spending factor. You can't just aimlessly search. Money is really important. I believe that you should start the whole saving habit from like a really young age. and you know even with the whole situation of the slow down right now you don't know how much you're going to make what salaries are going to be like so i think saving right now and just being uh, consistent with it is really is what needs to be done the gen z's exposure to a vast amount of knowledge um at their fingertips at an early age they are much more financially aware and savvy We found in our research a very resounding theme of enjoying life but enjoying life responsibly. So this is an audience that is quite aware that the world is not uh, is not in a very rosy place. The economies across the world are not doing very well. There's an awareness that your pockets aren't infinitely deep. That will be a headache for retailers. And there's more. Cashing in on brand love won't come easy either. This clothes is a different kind of brands and this are my clothes with the same brand. My shoes, any brand will do. Most of my products are from different brands. The brand doesn't matter to me. 2, 3, 4, 5 that I don't really care about the brand. Actually, even those that I buy a few pairs is because they are comfortable and I don't really think that because oh it's this brand that I'll buy this. I just don't understand why people are so stuck into one brand and be like I just want this brand. But I think any other brands also have more trendy and fashionable. I look for the price, the comfort, and of course the fashion itself. I got more clothes with different brands, and I only have these two clothes with the same brand. I don't see myself changing in one particular brand soon, because I think uh, every brand has something to offer, and I'll go with that. Uh, so I've grouped my makeup into the same brands and the ones I bought from different brands. As you can see, most of my products are from different brands. I really experiment and like you know whichever brand that I've seen or I think works as an individual product I go to that. Often on websites I'm always comparing and you know looking for new products and at the end of the day the key factor that helps me pick it is the price value and the price point. This is an audience that also sees through the brand hype. They're not as enchanted by brands as the millennials were. But the fact that you're wearing the most expensive brand really doesn't mean as much. Um, it's more about having made the right choice, both in terms of what's best for you, but also what's the brand's purpose. So there's a lot more conversation about brands doing good beyond just making profits. Yes, Gen Zs seek out brands that care. Nearly 95% want companies to address social and environmental issues more than any other generation. It's all about recycling, right? Because we kind of uh, use a lot of resources. So yeah, I think it's a pretty good idea. It gives me a small factor on my decision, my purchase decisions, because I'll be like, "Well, I need this product, and I'm saving the earth also. So why not? Let's just get this product. Do one extra step and save the earth." I'm the digital brand ambassador for this company, promoting pre-owned clothing. I'm one of their student influencers, and today I'm going to be talking about Kiabsa's consign module. Encourage people to buy pre-owned clothing because um, the whole phenomenon of fast fashion is really causing a lot of environmental harm. So this uh, platform is trying to reduce that, and getting people to be aware and conscious of what kind of clothing they're opting for. The whole um, talk about the sustainable change and it has been trending, but uh, I wouldn't say I've been doing that for the whole trend purpose. So I've just done a closet cleanse. I really believe in in brands that source their products ethically, um, have fair trade practices, and employ farmers, the rural population, to give them some stability and some growth. 
every brand can fast track this whole process and use other means but um, this takes time effort money and a lot of hard work so that's why i believe in this you can not only sell clothes on kiabza but you can buy as well so keep watching we're seeing patterns of purchases for brands that are local, that are authentic, that have a purpose. And that is really what's driving a lot of the buying and purchasing of the Gen Zs. There is an element of skepticism um, about uh, global brands, especially if they see the global brands to be tone deaf. Stand up for the earth. There is now a greater need for going back to the roots, which is probably one of the paradoxes about this cohort. They're very globally aware, yet they have that passion for where they come from. For me, I really love shopping local. This place has so much local stuff. As you're supporting your country, and I think that's something to be proud of. I really love picking up local chocolate flavors. Not just that, the flavors are really unique, really Filipino dark chocolate with green mango salt, milk chocolate adobo. Adobo is like the savory food in the Philippines, and they make it into chocolate, so it's really unique. It's, and not just that, their advocacy is really nice because they help Filipino farmers' family. All the ingredients, the chocolate itself, it's from Davao City. It's really Filipino and for the Filipinos. For our Filipino Gen Z, today's trip to the mall is real special. Jericho's new job as a cabin crew has earned him his first ever salary. So for my first salary, I'm planning to buy a gift from my mother. So I think she will love this handcraft jewelry that is proudly made in the Philippines. My mom loves accessories. I hope she likes it. And talking about likes, Social media consumes more than well, like half of my day. I got four Instagram accounts. It's yeah, it's a lot. In our research, we discovered about phoba, the fear of being alone. Gen Zs may have surprised you with their love for malls but it's not their number one place to hang out. Is it perhaps here? Here? Maybe there? Not at all. On our phones, of course. On our phones, of course. Phones, of course. I can't live without my social media, of course. I'm addicted to it. In simple words, I'm addicted to uh, browsing uh, my Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Generally, I spend three to four hours a day, especially, but longer, whenever I have free time. Social media consumes more than well, like half of my day. It starts with, okay, let me just go check this out, and 25 minutes later, I'm like, oh my god, I'm still here. Let's say I take a total of five hours on my phone. On social media, maybe three hours, 70% of the time, I would say. Actually, I myself, yes, I'm amazed at how much time I spend on social media. More than Gen X or even Millennials, Gen Z spend the most time on social media. We all know about FOMO, right? The fear of missing out. Gen Zs in social media, we found that there were two things driving this FOMO. They want to make sure that they're in the latest happenings, being talked about by their friends, the latest around the world. But in our research, we discovered about FOBA, the fear of being alone. This is largely driven by their exposure to social media that gives them a sense of being with somebody. Suddenly, if there's, their world quiets down because there's no internet uh, in none of the social media, there's that feeling of being alone. So which social media platform has Gen Z hooked? Gen Z! I got four Instagram accounts. It's, yeah, it's a lot, but it's all for different users. One Instagram account is my main one where I post my everyday things. The second one is where I want to post this photo, but I just don't feel like posting it on my main account. So I actually posted the very first photo of me and my boyfriend it's on my second account because there is much lesser followers as compared to my main account. Until me and my boyfriend, we are stable enough that we can tell more people, then I will shift over to my main account and post it over there. 
the third account, the dance group, uh, we have 10 people in our dance group. The fourth account, it will be me and my boyfriend account, where you post um, different stages of your relationship. I think the app I'm addicted to the most is Instagram. I think it's the most like talked about app and the most app used by Gen Z. So it's become like a sort of all-in-one platform to post pictures and you know communicate through your pictures and have like a small copy attached to it. I love documenting stuff. You're planning your feed, you're planning what post goes when. So for example, I just posted now because it's like 6 in the evening and I just finished my swim. There's something known as prime time posting which most people follow between like 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. you know people are going back from college or people from work are going home it's just like most people are on it you may get like lots of likes because it's like much more interactive the most social media account I use is my Instagram I'm a fine arts graduate and majority of the posts in Instagram are really visually and aesthetically appealing that's why I chose Instagram more in Instagram, before I was not posting pictures of myself, it's because I used to be overweight. And I think when, whenever I post photos during that time, I will just get judged by people. They will just tease me. I only post IG stories of food. <laughs> food and places, but not me. Here's my Instagram page, mostly blank. And here's my, re my recent photo. After I posted a photo of me in my cabin uniform, that really exploded in my IG account. Before I posted the Patlex uniform, I only got like a hundred followers. But now I think it tripled up. I already have like close to 400 followers. When Gen Z were, were sort of coming on age in around 2010, that's when Instagram was really launched. A lot of Gen Z, the first social media profile that they created was an Instagram profile rather than a Facebook profile. And the number of people that were on Facebook, it, became, it is a very public platform. Everybody and everybody's grandmother is almost on Facebook. Uh, so there's a sense that it's not a place for them to be as uncensored and put themselves out there. So Instagram is really sort of the medium of choice. Smile! Facebook was a fad back then, but I remember a phase that I used to go on Facebook religiously and wish everyone happy birthday. Like my friends and we used to discuss like, oh my god, did that person not wish you happy birthday on Facebook? Like it was a thing, but now not anymore. So I check Facebook maybe once a week, once a month. I also noticed like the older generation being on it. So Facebook is a form of keeping your family or your relatives up to date with your life. So yeah. Facebook is just a sideline for me to read news and to just catch up with the world. For Facebook, it's about following because you want to know more news on what's going on about the world. Whereas for Instagram, a lot of people, they will have lesser following but more followers. So which means it makes you seem like you're more famous. Yeah, in, in a way. So on Instagram itself, it's more on picture posting. What is happening with your friends, your social life. The major reasons to why I love Facebook is it's because of the memes. So I found this one meme here. These memes are for cabin crew and we can relate to this. Cabin crew is before and after it's back. Before it's empty, but after it's full of stops. <laughs> some cabin crew take uh, some leftovers from the aircraft. That's against the rules, but <laughs> some cabin crew do that. Not, not in Pal X, hopefully. <laughs> yes, it can all be very entertaining. But for Gen Zs, social media is also a place to, are you ready for this? Learn, pursue a passion, hone a talent. I was always really intrigued with makeup. I haven't really gone and learned makeup from a professional institute, but whatever I know right now is all thanks to YouTube and the different influencers. I pay attention to the tips and tricks. If I'm particularly doing a look like, for instance, last Halloween, I did a whole makeup look on Wonder Woman. I really nailed the look and I was so happy with myself. You can learn be it like life hacks, budgeting trips, it gives you insights. So YouTube isn't just been entertaining for me. This is a generation that is growing up in a world of hyper-competition. 
So there's always a need to have that edge and access to knowledge that is really topical to what they need to know. We are seeing a lot of self-paced learning that Gen Z are following on YouTube. It's just a far more visual medium, Gen Z. It is a generation that is far more visual. There's a lot of impatience around reading too much text. I enjoy using YouTube because it's very accessible, it's free. I look for the videos on how to draw the eyes, the hair, because that is the trickiest part when you're doing a sketch of a portrait. Sample for the hair, you should draw it strand by strand. Then for the eyes, obviously that's one of the hardest parts, so make sure that you really copied it perfectly. As long as you have Wi-Fi, you could search for a video, you could do a sketch anywhere. Gen Z's, we call the YouTube uh, generation. Um, and why is that? Because the Gen Z's grew up when technology was already very optimized. Internet speeds that they experience are actually the 3G's and 4G's. Therefore, they were able to stream videos seamlessly. Unlike older generations that actually had to wait for videos to buffer, if you remember the time when we had to wait for that circle to, you know, finish. So I have this really big dance group Tool, set, net. that we usually dance every week, um, two times a week. As an um, amateur dancer, I will go on to YouTube look at how the original dance is being executed out and then plot who is going to stand where, the formations, everything. It actually looks like that. It's just circles and circles and circles, but it's basically where each of us will stand. We're actually preparing for this dance video. I do have other videos in my YouTube account with four or five people all together. This time around, it's a big group, so it's more difficult to actually coordinate in a big group of seven, especially with formation changes. It's a big deal. Last time, we, we don't do seven people with formation. We are not moving around. There's so many preparations just for this particular video. Shopping at malls, social media. What else do Gen Zs do for play? I love to experience, find out about the unspoken, hidden places. When I go to bars to enjoy, it's not about alcohol. I really like a bar with live music. Remember how Gen Zs crave experiences? Gen Z lives their life online, so they really crave physical experiences. Shopping is just one example. Well, no surprise then that they have a wanderlust. Gen Zs prioritize their spending on travel more than on clothes or even gadgets. I love to experience, find out about the um, unspoken, hidden places. I think that has a different kind of excitement. You're getting to experience that, which is something that, it, it's a different, it's a feeling. I'd pick a place which is giving me a different aspect of culture or their lifestyle, things to do there basically. I mean, material things can, can lose, but experience, you'll treasure that forever. So, for me, going to a different place, enjoying their culture, I think that's one of uh, the things I'm looking forward to. What I look for is in learning about history, I also look for the experience that the country itself provides. For example, the flamenco dance that I actually did in Spain itself. It's a really interesting dance that is very different from what I do, which is hip-hop and K-pop. So it's the kind of different um, skill set that you acquire and the different experience that you learn from overseas. This is a generation that is looking to learn. They're surrounded by a lot of images on Instagram, but social media sort of puts you in a feedback loop. The kind of information that you see is all very much one perspective. So traveling just allows you to see the world in a very, very different way, uh, to have a very physical experience of the world, which social media doesn't. We're thinking quite deeply about what Gen Z want. And one of the things we know that they're looking for is very local and authentic experiences. 
We launched Airbnb Experiences about three years ago. The experiences are interesting activities that are led by local people. And an example of that would be uh, making a very local type of kimchi in Korea or making sushi rolls in Japan. Surf lessons in Bali have become very popular in particular. Recently, we launched a campaign to experience K-pop culture in Seoul. So you can, for example, take a dance class, you could maybe get in the studio with a singer. Gen Z's in particular really enjoyed booking those experiences. We've seen uh, Gen Z's bookings on Airbnb experiences triple in the last year in Asia Pacific, and it's actually now our fastest growing segment. Part of experiencing life is also about living it up. But partying the Gen Z way might not be what you'd imagine. Many can now have their first drink, but that's no biggie. I'm a very uh, light alcohol drinker. It's not like I need to drink to have fun. Uh, one watermelon mint. And I've noticed that even my peers, it's not that we go out to drink. They wouldn't end up doing crazy stuff or like falling across the road. I mean, even though you're going out to have fun and stuff, everyone has a phone and everyone's taking pictures yeah. and the last thing you want is being found with an intoxicated picture online or on social media. Later, when you're going to apply for a job, people are tracking you on your social media. You can have fun, no one's saying don't have fun, but like know your limits. I've seen drunk people before. It's really a situation that I don't want to be in. And it's really embarrassing when someone has to bring you home and nurse you. Friends of uh, my age have the same drinking habit, so we either don't drink or we just drink a pint of beer. I, in fact, I'm probably one of the heavier drinkers among my friends. They usually just drink half a pint of beer. When I go to bars to enjoy, it's not about alcohol. I really like a bar with live music. A singer is singing with different kind of uh, music genre and even different languages. It's a kind of unique thing that you are not hearing on your phone through a earpiece. And then said, look for, it will be the kind of people who will get one drink maybe, and after that, it will continue, but less alcohol. They spend less than alcohol, yes, but they are willing to pay for non-alcoholic drinks. Non-alcoholic beers are getting popular with Gen Z because they are not drinking alcohol. We are creating a several flavors of mojitos or a several, several flavors of smoothies. Uh, I'll just take iced tea and I'll have the same as him. Originally, I don't drink alcohol. I never drink. I just started drinking now. So I drink like one to two packs of alcoholic drinks per week. I don't drink more because alcohol is not healthy for you. I mean, your, your tummy would get bloated and there's a lot of sugar. And I, I don't want to get drunk. I mean, that's bad for my career. And for us cabin crew, there's always a weight check and we should be physically healthy. This is not a rebellious generation. The alcohol consumption for Gen Z is far lesser than millennials. It's one reason being that the parenting styles of the Gen Xers, the parents of the Gen Zs, is far more open than the parenting styles that the millennials were used to. So as a result of which, there's nothing to really rebel against. We've heard a lot of, a lot of Gen Zs just talking about how alcohol is a waste of time, drugs are a waste of time, that if they wanted to sort of blow off some steam, uh, they'd rather watch some content or go to the gym. Fitness is key for our Gen Zs. Yes, they'll make for great Instagram pics, but that's certainly not what's keeping them on the treadmill. Sir, let me discuss the, our options of membership. I'm here at the gym today to inquire for a gym, for a gym membership. Today I'm with my friend MJ. Being fit is not just about the looks. It's for your body, for your future. Being fit helps me move, helps me make things generally easier because us working in a cabin. Yeah, especially for our cabin crew, we, uh, we carry the luggages. More or less, the luggages are really heavy, so we help the passengers to carry their luggages in, in the overhead beam. So it's really important for us to be healthy and to keep our health in shape. I'm planning to join the gym again, especially now that I'm starting to earn money. Personally, I struggled with my weight. Before, I was like 89 kilograms, and now I'm like 64, just a year. So I went to the gym for a month, like three hours every day. There would be a long career ahead of me. I mean, I'm still young, so I have to maintain all this until the future.
but I think staying fit has become one of my top priorities. I feel the full change, like from being lethargic or not being able to walk up flows or just being low and lazy. Having a whole fitness routine in place, it just changes my whole personality. I believe fitness is one, but also you have to watch what you're eating. Have a balanced diet as well, as much as I can. So when I'm trying to eat healthy, eggs is something I really include in my diet. Proteins are an important part of my diet. There are multiple days I go on cheat days, and you know, with college and in extra events, my diet just goes off track. And th those are the days I really go on the strict diet. Um, I mean, it, it, it includes a number of things because I, I try to follow it for those days, and it's always listed on my fridge myself that it's a healthy lifestyle change and not a diet. Jolene's also got a routine going to stay fit. No gyms for her. Dancing to K-pop does the trick. It's important for me to dance and keep healthy because it's something that keeps your heart pumping instead of staying in front of a computer or lying down on the sofa. It's of a lesser chance to have those kind of illness and stuff. Yeah, so it's a really good form of exercise to be doing. Since I was young, I was a competitive swimmer and I started to represent the country in smaller games, in competing triathlon. But thereafter, when I started working, there isn't much time for you to train. That's why I've transited to dancing, which is my form of fitness right now. Tonight's session is slightly different. Fitness, yes, but a bit of glamming it up as well. Okay, so we just finished our practice and then we are actually um, preparing the makeup and everything for the video shoot. So, cameraman, my boyfriend, is... Ah, yeah, there. <laughs> Actually, a K-pop dance cover definitely big deal because it's the first time all seven of us are doing all this together, especially with a formation and with so many practice. So it is a big deal, and I hope we do this well. Yeah. I'm actually going to upload this on YouTube itself, so y'all can just check out our channel and then, uh, yeah, go and look at the video. <laughs> Sorry about something for my, from my first salary. What? <laughs> In Manila today, Jericho has taken time off to meet his mother. Remember those earrings he bought at the mall? Time to give her the gift from his first ever salary. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Will you wear that? Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow? So every day. What event? <laughs> every day, you can think of sure. Yeah. Do you like that? Yes. Hard shade? Heart shape, my favorite. Happy ako and proud and blessed to have him as a son. Talagang uh, kanina habang inaabot niya sa akin to, habang binigay niya, naisip ko yung mga... Wait lang, <laughs> wait lang ha, wait lang. Yung mga hardship na binaanan namin before. Pero now, napalitan lahat yon ng... Uh, happiness. <laughs> Did you like it? Yes. <laughs> this is a deeply socially conscious generation. There's a lot of emphasis to really just expand your horizons. Move beyond the trap of social media. Gen Zs want to enjoy life, but they do want to enjoy it responsibly. I'd imagine that this uh, generation is a bit more wiser. Gen Zs are really just Gen Zs. Like, there's so much. I mean, if you try to make me uh, summarize something, it, it's really difficult. If I had to sum up Gen Z, it would be uh, multitaskers on the go, always looking for new experiences, super hardworking, and know how to have fun. I think they call us Gen Z's Zestful. 
We work hard, we play hard. We have to enjoy what we do. So we do it to our best. Just go out there, have fun, do what you like. Being a Gen Z is, I mean, just doing things that you love while earning, hard working, hustling hard for your future, helping your family, your friends. I think it's really funny that getting all this attention just because I'm a Gen Z. At the end of the day, being Gen Z is being me, being ourselves, just being us. Gen Z! I work hard.